Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk about, you know, three big things that, you know, I really, really wish I knew in my early 20s that really have gotten me a millionaire before like 25. Okay, and just for context, um, I'm not like in my 30s, I'm not that old. Um, 2021, this means that I'll be 27 this year. And kind of like, this is some context, right? So basically, you know, way back in uh, when I was 23, you know, I joined the insurance industry, you know, this is your typical insurance agent, financial advisor kind of thing. I joined as an intern and then obviously from there, you know, I felt like that was a extremely lucrative and fulfilling kind of industry to be in and really made me happy, right? Doing sales and all that stuff. So yeah, you know, that was kind of a journey. Did have a couple of years, a little bit of money, all while like studying as, as a student, right? In a university, uh, studying accounting, which is pretty boring. Okay, but... Basically, you know, over those two, three years, I've learned a lot and I made a ton of mistakes, which honestly, if someone have, you know, had taught me all these things, these three main things, you know, before um, I, well, well, during my journey, you know, I, I wouldn't have made all these mistakes and I could have been a lot more successful, a lot more, you know, richer and, and probably a millionaire. I, I, I strongly believe like I would have been a millionaire before I was 25. Unfortunately, uh, life happens. Right, and uh, you know, I'm not a millionaire, and you know, obviously, uh, these are mistakes I've made. I want to share this with you, okay, hoping that you know, hoping that you know, when you watch this video, you can really learn this and will not make the same mistakes as I did back then, okay. The first thing that um, I wish someone had taught me that I knew, that I wish I have knew, was spending not money, but like spending time wisely. Okay, now what do I mean by that? So, you know, when, when we are young, when you're like in 20s, you know, in the 18s, 20s, um, time seems to like last forever, right? You know, it feels like you have plenty of time every day. It feels like, you know, 30, 35 years old, getting married, having a kid and all that stuff. Uh, it's pretty far away, right? And what this means is that, you know, because we are young, we seem like we have a whole life ahead, which is true, right? But at the same time, at least for me, what happened was that, you know, I kind of like take time for granted. So what this means is that I woke up, I wake up every day feeling as though that uh, I have a lot of time, you know, it's just another day. Uh, even if this year I don't make it for whatever that means, if this year I don't hit my goals, uh, it's still okay because there's another year, there's another year, there's another year. Now, while this is kind of like not wrong because on one hand, you know, there, there's a lot to life, right? I mean, there's uh, 50, 60 years, you know, and all that stuff, assuming that, you know, we want 80 plus. Um, but on the other hand, it gets us into this cycle of like thinking that we have a lot of time every single day. And what really happened was that because of that, uh, abundance in time or in my mindset, I spent a lot of time on doing dumb things. Okay. So back then was in, in the insurance industry, right? So back then, you know, you have like, uh, you know, when a colleague asks you for dinner, you just like go for dinner out of nowhere. You say you want to sing karaoke, you want to go and drink or whatever it is, right? And, and these are like, things are not planned. Like most of them are not planned. Most of them are like ad hoc stuff, like in the zone, in the mood, you know? And whatever, I'll spend a lot of like downtime on those things, which kind of like wasted even more time because like if let's say I go for a, a dinner or drinks that ends at like 1, 2 a.m., you know, the next day I'm going to hang over and then like maybe wake up late and then it, it kind of like go downhill from there, right? But obviously, uh, I didn't really care because I thought, you know, I was young, I have money and I uh, just want to enjoy life, right? But if, if I, I would have kind of like allocated my time properly, uh, meaning to say that if I have all these things planned out, you know, like a day a week that I take time off to have a drink or whatever it is, you know, rather than ad hoc kind of activities, I would have been a lot more successful because all this time could have been reinvested into my business into becoming a better financial planner, creating more videos like this, or even helping more, way more people, right? But obviously, you know, that didn't happen. I just like, I was an idiot, you know, just, just spend time <laughs> doing nothing sometimes, right? Being a waste man. Like, there, there are times where literally a week, right? Where I wake up and I say, you know, today what I deserve a break, you know, uh, out of nowhere. You know, I just kind of validate and uh, justify that by myself. I say I need a break and then, ta-da, I just didn't uh, do anything for the day. I just drove around, back then in a car, right? So I just drove around, uh, chilling, buying drinks, I mean, like coffee or like going to the cafe, like doing whatever the hell I want, you know, without caring about like business, without caring about things that are going on that probably a little bit more important at that point in time, okay? So my point is, right, when you're young, while it is true that you have a lot in life, uh, hate and all that stuff, I think it's very important, you know, if you, you try to be successful and, 
and things like that. It's really very important to track your time. You know, we always talk about like tracking money, tracking expenses. Um, but I think most of us, like myself, we do not really track time. You know, we, we just kind of like let it go, fly by, you know, past us like any point in time and, and we don't really care too much about it, right? I think if I had calculated my time a little bit better while balancing kind of like, I mean, this doesn't mean that, you know, it's all work and no play. I think it's more like if we have allocated it properly and being well aware, fully aware that this is the time that we're going to spend on work and this is the time we're going to spend on, on like play or like having drinks or like watching TV or Netflix, right? Then I think it would have been more fulfilling. I think it wouldn't have felt like a waste because, you know, at least there was an like, intention for every single activity that was being done, you know. Last time, it was just like, kind of like, go along with whatever that comes, you know. I mean, that's, that's the biggest lesson that I've learned and the biggest mistake that I've made as well, right? Because now that, you know, and trust me, for you young folks out there, I mean, uh, if you're watching this, you might think that, ah, you know, you really have no time. And I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm saying that once you reach like 24, 25, 26, you know, time seems to fly like extremely fast. Okay, so that's like the first one, uh, first lesson that I've learned and I hope that this is something that you will, you know, be able to take away and uh, to really track your time properly and be intentional about the time spent on the activities, right, such that you actually get more fulfillment, you know, uh, more in the zone during these activities as well. Now, number two is that, which comes to the very normal one, uh, to me is you really need to like earn the money, yes, save money and live frugally okay and invest this money so you know here's here's the ironic thing okay now when you are young and let's say you earn i mean back then i was like earning about 15 to twenty thousand a month as a 23 years old so i think that's pretty comfortable and the thing is like when you are young and you're able to earn this amount of money this will usually mean that you know you are i don't know, you put in the work enough you are intelligent to a certain degree, a small degree of like able to reach that kind of uh, capability to earn this kind of money, right? So it kind of, you know, let people have the impression that, hey, you are, you are smart enough, you, you have a lot of potential and so on and so forth. But here's the funny thing, the ironic thing about this, right, is that when you have so much money and you're young, and when you are young, usually you make stupid mistakes, you make dumb decisions. It seems like the more money you have when you're young, the dumber you are. And let me explain why I say that, right? So back then, 23, 24, I was earning like, 15, 20 dollars a month. First thing I bought, you know, obviously was like iPad and some things for my parents you know, to give back to them, you know, to treat them with meal and all their stuff, right? So so it was all fine. I felt it was worth it. Uh, and it is worth it, you know, those are good memories. I mean, as I get more money, you know, I start spending things on like uh, buying a car. I got an Audi um, A4, like a secondhand one, you know, I down pay almost like 25,000, right? And then my monthly maintenance for the car was almost like 2.5 to 3,000 if I don't remember wrongly. You know, you talk about like petrol, installment, maintenance. And because of the second hand car, I had to go to workshop a little more often than I ought to. So these are expenses that came in. Uh, that was the car. And then I started to have an extremely luxurious lifestyle. And what do I mean by that? Literally in a month, I went to like maybe Hai Di Lao or like some slightly finer dining kind of restaurants. And I went to Hai Di Lao probably like seven times a month. Um, I go to like those slightly finer dining restaurants, you know, I don't know, once or twice a week. So that was like the luxury lifestyle. I started to treat people. I started to, um, you know, just, you know, literally just, you know, kind of like throw my money out there, you know, that I just really enjoy life, you know, go overseas, whatever it is, you know, just, just spend the money, right? I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong. And, and please don't get me wrong. Like I fully enjoy it. I, I don't think I regretted any single moment experience over there. It's just that, you know, I wish I could have, allocated again track and manage my money a little bit more prudently because when you're young and you're earning a lot of money you will get the sense that you know if i'm earning this amount of money at this rate by the time i'm 30 i would have like been set for life and that kind of stuff but like that's a very huge flop assumption to make because sometimes things might happen unexpectedly and all that stuff and you might lose the earning ability in a particular job and things over time right so my point is you know because i spend so much money my expenses so in those couple of years, 22, 25, I earn about like a good five to 600,000. And I can tell you that my yearly expense back then was almost like 80 to 90,000 a year. Okay, uh, which is pretty ridiculous. If you ask me looking back, and, and I think it's, it's completely stupid. So if you think about it, I, I literally probably spend maybe, let's say on average, maybe around 200, 200 to 220,000 um, in total. 
you know, in, in two years. Like, honestly, you know, I, I really spent things, like, dumb things, right? Like, I, I bought a Rolex, uh, so that it looks good. Uh, I bought a lot of other things, like I mentioned just now. Uh, $1,000 suits, <laughs> okay? Like, suits with a Gucci tie, or uh, whatever tie it is, uh, LV wallet, you know, all sorts of things, okay, basically. So, it, it, you know, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. But my point is, I went back to really reflect on this, right? And if I managed my money uh, better, if I have allocated the investments or reinvest it back into my advisory business by hiring coaches, you know, to accelerate faster, by hiring a few people to help me with my administrative tasks so that I can actually serve better, or you know, serve my team, serve my clients better, now I would have gotten like a lot more richer, a lot more success as well in, in, in that sense, right? This this is, I wouldn't say it's a regret, you know, like I can mention I don't regret. I'm just saying like, you know, this would have probably been the thing that would have gotten me a lot more richer and be a millionaire. Uh, by then, you know, because of the investment, the returns and all that stuff, right? So lesson from this, right? Uh, just take away is that number one, please make sure that every single money or every single cent you earn, make sure you save and invest it, right? And and more importantly, is really to track and know where all this money is going, okay? Because when you are young and you have money coming in, sometimes you don't know what to do, which is literally why like those NBA or NFL players, when they like suddenly so rich, they also lose a lot of money, Pretty, they lose their money pretty fast. They lose their wealth pretty fast because they have no idea, they have no experience in, in terms of like how to uh, get that going or like get it invested and all that stuff. Okay, so likewise with me and I hope this won't happen to you. The last one is literally just a short one. Um, I want to talk about like, you know, messing around with the right people. One of the biggest mistakes that I've made last time was that I, I hang out with the wrong people whereby, you know, whether it's your colleagues or whether it's in the wrong environment basically where where there's all sort of negativity, where people tell you that you can't do it, people tell you that they can't, that you can't make it, or you know, people look down on you when you fail to achieve certain targets and all that stuff, right? And I think like you know, this is something that's very important because your environment, your environment actually has a lot more control over your subconscious behaviors, which is the reason why I went for a lot of drinks, I went to chill and all that stuff, spend money like nobody's business, uh, because of the environment. Right now, while I'm not blaming anyone, and in fact, I only have myself to blame because you know I put myself in the environment. But I think, like looking back, if mix around the right people, people with the right core values, people with the right beliefs, or rather same beliefs as you, that you know to get to where you want to be, you know you should be hanging out with these people basically. And, and I think about like coaches and mentors, uh, which I had last time, which is you know one thing is very important to understand is while we have coaches and mentors, I think it's crucial to understand that there there will be you need to constantly assess. Uh, at different intervals, you know, during which where you need to understand that, okay, can I learn anything more from this mentor or this coach? Because sometimes you, you reach a certain um, timeline or the path in, your, in a relationship with a coach or mentor where you don't or can't seem to grow any further from, from staying with them, right? So I think that's something, you know, to take care or rather to understand that a little bit better because this is where it allows you to be more self-aware in the people that you really hang out with, uh, even you have your own coach. I think that's like a big one. Because if I place myself in the right environment, the right people, I think my mindset, you know, I think my growth would have been a lot more um, extraordinary, you know, for you a lot more faster, right? And in the right direction, you know, I wouldn't have made like stupid mistakes and all that stuff. And I think when it comes to like, these are work stuff, right? But I think when it comes to friends or family, I think it's extremely crucial to also, I'm not saying to cut them off, but I think it's also crucial to keep a little bit of distance with people that, you know, kind of like negative. So I think when I first started, you know, my friends and my parents to a small degree, you know, kind of like disapproved me for being like an insurance agent because again, they raised me up to be a, you know, an accountant, you know, go de- have a degree and all that stuff, you know, for the last 20 years and to be an insurance agent where society don't really respect them as much, at least here in Singapore and Asia, it's, it's not really their most ideal, you know, kind of like picture in their head, you know, how their son is going to be like. Uh, but if you ask me, I think while I love my parents a lot, I love my friends a lot and, and uh, people that are close to me, I think it's very important to also kind of like have that boundary and know when and when not to talk to them about certain things, right? Because there's a huge, like, I think one important concept I think we need to talk about is opinion versus counsel. So every time we talk about like getting advice, we need to know who are we getting advice from and the type of advice that we want. So imagine like, let's say you need relationship advice. You probably wouldn't want to ask like your manager or somebody that, is single, right? Somebody that doesn't have a relationship at all or do not even have any relationship experience or at least in, have a few expertise, you know, uh, in, in relationships, right? You probably want to go that route because uh, that will be more like an opinion, you know, what they say. 
But if you go to, let's say, a coach who is, uh, is a relationship coach, you know, somebody that, you know, is, is very, very extremely uh, uh, competent in the field, right? Then I think that's kind of like seeking counsel, you know, like the three people that really walked it before, people have a way better idea of like how things are going to be like and all that stuff. So imagine it's like, you know, you love your, your career a lot, uh, but you're facing ups and downs here and there, and then you go and ask some of your other friends who's like, uh, ask them should you stay in the job? And some, some of them would just be like, hey, just, just quit. You know, you can always find another one. Blah blah blah, you know, and 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 while they probably have a lot of interest, like they definitely do think of you, they they might not really have that expertise to kind of like give you a more solid, concrete advice, you know. So I think it's very important to differentiate between opinion, seeking opinion versus seeking counsel. Okay, so yeah, so that's like the third one. Um, so far when it comes to like mixing around with people and uh, seeking the right advice or opinion from the right people, right? These are three things, and uh, you know, if you are watching this like till now. Right, uh, gonna acknowledge you, you're gonna be fucking amazing and uh, 2021 is gonna be awesome for you, okay? Because if you can take all these lessons, put it in the back of your head and always have a gentle reminder, awareness of uh, your day-to-day -day life and activities, uh, you're gonna have a lot more success than me, okay? A lot more success than a lot of people and something, you know, and these are obviously things I wish someone would have taught me earlier, right? So if you find this content and this video useful, you know, just uh, like, comment, let me know your thoughts, you know, and hit the notification bell, subscribe. Uh, to this video so that I can post more and you can be notified as well. So yeah, have a wonderful 2021. Take these lessons, okay, and don't make the same mistakes as me. Cheers.